Okay, this is a fourth example. We're looking at double integrals and change of variable. I like to call it UV substitution. And so this integrand has a y over x inside of a square root and then an x times y inside of a square root. So those by themselves might be able to be overcome, but the region in the xy plane though um, is bounded by uh, two hyperbolas and two lines. We have um, xy equals 1 is y is 1 over x. xy equals 9 is y is 9 over x. So that's the red and the blue respectively. And then y equals x is the green and y equals 4x is the, um, the light blue color there. And so our region is bounded by those four curves in the first quadrant. So it's the yellow region there that, that is s. And what we want to do is be able to change this. This is going to be too difficult. If we do dx dy, dy dx, it's going to be multiple integrals. It's going to be too much work. So we want to change variables. And we look inside the integrand for a clue as to what to let u equal and what to let v equal. Inside the integrand, we have this y over x, who is inside of a root, and this xy, who is inside of a root. And so we could let u be the y over x, and let v be the xy. That's an option. Let's see what this does to the region. Something nice happens. If u is equal to y over x, then what we would have is the fact that y is equal to x would convert into u being equal to 1. And then if y is equal to 4x, that means that y over x is equal to 4 or u is equal to 4. So that converts nicely in terms of u to be u going from 1 to 4, those two lines. When it comes to these parabolas, if xy is 1, that means v is 1. And if xy is 9, that means v is 9. So v is going to be between 1 and 9. So it turns out that we end up with a very nice rectangular region in uv space. We call this one r. And what we're going to do with this is this is going to be what we integrate over. So we then go with the integrand changing to be square root of u plus square root of v. We have uh, u's going from 1 to 4 and v's going from 1 to 9. And we're doing it as du dv. Nothing to stop us from going dv to u. Um, but um, we can't forget about the Jacobian. And the main purpose of this example is that in the other three examples, the Jacobian was a constant. And my purpose in making sure that you went through this example is to, um, to show you that the Jacobian can sometimes depend on u and v or u or v. And so let's go calculate the Jacobian. Now remember, this is the Jacobian in terms of uv. That means partial derivatives in terms of u and v. But what we have is v in terms of x and y. And so if we do partial derivatives with x and y, we'll be doing the Jacobian in x and y. They're related. The Jacobian in u and v and the Jacobian in x and y are related. But let's just take the x partial. What we get is minus y over x squared for u's x partial. And then for u's y partial, we just get 1 over x. The derivative of v with respect to x is going to be y, and the derivative of v with respect to y is going to be x. We throw these guys in a determinant, 2 by 2, and we tag this as the Jacobian of xy. It's the xy partials that we took. This actually is the Jacobian that's tied to the inverse transformation, going from uv space back into xy space. But these guys are related to each other. The one that we need and the one we're going to get are reciprocals of each other. Upon calculating this determinant, what we end up with is minus y over x and then another minus y over x. And so we have minus 2 of these y over x's as our Jacobian. But we can't have x's and y's anymore. It turns out nicely that y over x is equal to u. So our Jacobian that's backwards, that is the inverse transformation of Jacobian, it is minus 2u. The Jacobian we need is the reciprocal of that, so 1 over minus 2u.
when we go inside the integral though, what needs to happen is that Jacobian needs to get absolute value bars slapped around it to force it to be positive amplifying factor. And so we get to replace the Jacobian and UV absolute value bar symbol there with 1 over 2U. And we're going to do the U integral first. Let's distribute. Uh, what is root U times 1 over 2 root U? That will become 1 half of 1 over root U. And then we can pull the half. Let's say we pull the half all the way out. We'd have uh, 1 over root U and then root V over U. Distributing across here the uh, 1 over U. Pulling the half out and putting 1 over U in. If we have um, the square root of U and we multiply it by 1 over U, that will simplify to be 1 over the square root of U. When it's time to integrate, we can call that U to the negative 1 half. And then uh, rad V times 1 over U is just going to be rad V over U. When it's time to integrate, we isolate this rad V, kind of pull it out front. It's constant. We're integrating with respect to U. And so we're going to get the power rule in reverse. This will be U to the half times 2, or divided by half. Um, and then this will be a natural log. We have to put a 4 in, and we have to put a 1 in. So, uh, square root of 4 is 2, so that's going to be a 2 times 2, that's a 4, plus rad v times log 4. And then we put the 1 in, and we get 2 plus rad v times log 1. Um, what I've done here is I, I've separated that and juggled that up so I can put the terms together that are alike. So I put the 4 and the 1 inside the first one, then I put the 4 and the 1 inside the second one. But um, what ends up happening then is that we get 2 and then the log of 1 is equal to 0 and so we end up with 2 plus log 4 rad v and the rad v change it to the half exponent we're going to integrate this now with respect to v don't forget the one half is on the outside so we get 2 v and then keep that log 4 it's a constant and have v to the 3 halves times 2 thirds Okay, now I did a quick change to this guy. I think uh, the main purpose behind that is the ability to be able to bring in the, the one half. It wasn't necessary though. Let's let's leave it maybe as log four. Um, and so we put the nine in, giving us 18. Put the one in, giving us a two. So we have the 18 minus two there. Or the, um, put the nine in, put the one in, get the eight, and then double um, to get the 16. And then uh, put the 9 and 2 inside the other. And 9 to the 3 halves is the square root of 9 cubed. So that's going to be a 27. Take away the 1, that's going to be a 26. So 2 thirds of 26 goes there. And then um, I wrote this 2 log 2 on purpose because the next step is I'm going to distribute this 1 half inside. And it's basically going to cancel out those twos. And so when we end up getting a, um, an 8. And so uh, let me not put, let me not call this 16. So we end up getting an 8. And then log 2 times the, uh, the 26 doubled over 3. This uh, 2 from here and a 3 from there. So that's 52 over 3, who's multiplied by log 2. And then we add 8 to that for our final answer. Okay, so Jacobian is not constant. That's the point behind this example. The, um, the actual converting is, is into a nice rectangle, but it's not straightforward converting. And our choice of U and V became evident by looking at the integrand and seeing uh, what can we pick to make the integrand simpler. And we were lucky enough to have the integrand be simpler and the region be simpler. The last hurdle was to figure out what's going on with the Jacobian. And we took the route of finding the inverse transformations Jacobian 
that's this transformation backwards the Jacobian with that guy is Jacobian on XY and our job is to find the forward transformations Jacobian that's Jacobian and UV but they're related if you do one followed by another the other if you amplify by a factor of five then you'll be um, shrinking by a factor of a fifth to get back to the same um, value of, of one and, and so that's what's going on that is why these guys are reciprocals of each other and so you don't have to worry about trying to get X equals some function of U and V and Y equals some function of U and V you don't have to worry about doing that what you can do is just take your given X is function of Y and X and use function of Y and X and V's function of Y and X and go ahead and take their partials and but just remember that's the the wrong Jacobian and your Jacobian that you need is the reciprocal Jacobian okay so that's the last example um, you have uh, four examples and you have uh, the concept slide as well um, explained and so uh, hopefully that's enough for you to do well um, if you have any questions comment down below or you can email me